alumni career panel here at Paradise Valley Community College. Uh, my role here, I'm the alumni coordinator. I also work within the Office of Development here at Paradise Valley Community College. And development is the area where we're always uh, trying to raise money for student scholarships. So that's an important role as well as this wonderful opportunity to work with our alumni here at PDCC and as they continue to go on, on in their professional and educational journeys. And so we're very happy to have several alumni that have to join us this morning. Some of them are participating in this panel virtually, and we also have Hanada here at, in person. So we want to say thank you very much for joining us and sharing your expertise and insight. Uh, they, as PBCC alumni, have walked the journey that the, our students are currently uh, engaged in, and so they have a lot of uh, good, insightful information to share this morning. And they will each introduce themselves. I would like to just make a few additional remarks regarding housekeeping items. We are going to be recording the panel so that if students who are not able to attend because of conflicting classes, work schedules, and so forth, they'll be able to listen to the recording and read the transcript. So just want to let everyone know that we will be doing that. And we hope that those of you that are in attendance virtually will turn your cameras on. It's always nice to be able to see all the friendly faces that are participating virtually. And we will be taking questions that are posed in the chat in addition to questions that our wonderful audience members are going to share. So if you are participating virtually, go ahead and put your questions in the chat and our wonderful panel facilitators will help to share those with our panelists. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our panel facilitators. They not only are panel facilitators this morning, but they are also among our peer leaders here at Paradise Valley Community College. And so they are going to help uh, facilitate the panel by asking the predetermined questions, as well as monitoring the chat. So we have with us in the room here in the KSC, uh, Francis Widget. He's over on the far right. And then we have Gabriel Ruiz. And then virtually, we have a couple other peer leaders as well. So I'd like to mention their names as well. Jamie Lee, she is there with us wearing red. And then we also have Tamara and Jack. And so we want to say thank you very much for giving your time and expertise to help with this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. We'll start recording if we haven't already to our panel facilitators. Rich, I guess I'll start it off. Then. Um, was there a few times that influenced you in your career path? And if so, please. Two, but if you want to, feel free. Yeah. Don't be too late. Everybody's here in the speakers from the panel uh, desk, right? Yes. Want to do introductions first of all of our panel? Well, oh, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Uh, let's start with Hanada. Okay, uh, my name is Hanada, and uh, I work uh, currently um, as a contractor, interpreter, translator, um, or you can call it multi language consultant. Um, so I'm a graduate here from uh, PVCC previously, uh, years ago. I uh, got my associate and then transferred to a business degree uh, after that, the BS, um, science. Uh, so what influenced me? That was the question. Of, uh, uh, in my I'm sorry, I jumped ahead of the game. Yeah. We need to have everybody introduce themselves first. Oh, I do apologize. Okay, I thought everybody would be true. <laughs> Fine. Uh, is Andrew Clay here? Not here. Not here. Alexis Cross, uh, I'm sorry about your last name, Roydale? Roydale. Roydale? Yeah. Um, so yeah, hi everyone. My name is Alexis Croydale. I attended PBCC from 2013 to 2015 and my major was journalism. Um, I currently work as a content and social media manager for a company called Mongoose and we specialize in selling conversational software to higher education institutions. Um, I'm excited to be here. I definitely 
if you listen to that title, it doesn't sound like it correlates to journalism, but it does um, in a way. And I'm just excited to share my experience and answer your questions today. Thank you, Alexis. Uh, Cassandra McCormick. Morning, thank you so much for having me. Um, I am a long time ago graduate from PVCC, uh, more than 20 years. I was an economics major and um, my home base is in Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, but I travel for work. I'm the vice president of operations and the clinical director for a home health company. Uh, we do concierge services. So, and we're currently scaling our company and uh, the economics part has been very important for uh, helping me be able to do this part of my role in the company. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And now, Lizzie McNutt. Good morning. Um, thank you for having me. And again, I'm a long time graduate of PVC College from years ago, 86, I believe. Um, I, my major was fine arts and I, I come, come, kind of come from a long family of entrepreneurs. So I started my own business in 2006. Seven, I believe I started out as a ghostwriter and transferred into a publishing company. So now I run my own publishing company here in Arizona. I have clients worldwide. Um, I dearly love it doing what I do it gives me the opportunity to do all sorts of different things. And I'm just here to share my experiences. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Lizzie. And finally, Hannah Willis. Wiles, Wills, I apologize. That's okay. It's Hannah Wills. Um, yes, I am a PVCC graduate from 2019. I graduated, um, I had majored in philosophy and political science, and then I transferred over to ASU and got my bachelor degree, two bachelor degrees uh, last year, and I had the opportunity to during my time at ASU, um, intern at the Arizona State Legislature, and was then hired on as a research analyst uh, for this session. So I'm currently serving in for my second session in the Arizona State Legislature. And so most of my reading these days, um, don't tell Dr. Burton, is Arizona Revised Statute <laughs> instead of our lovely philosophical readings. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what I do these days. Okay. Let's try that again. Uh, now you remember the question, so I'll repeat it. Was there a key moment in time that influenced you in your career path? And if so, please, that's that. There are a lot of moments that uh, influenced me in my career path. Um, it starts with actually volunteering. Surprise. I volunteered in a one um, with an organization for resettlement and it was teaching ESL um, for uh, newcomers, uh, refugees with International Rescue Committee. And from there, uh, that um, kind of influenced me to change because my major basically when I finished, it was business. And when I finished the associate here at Paradise Valley, it was art and social and culture. And I took a lot of cultural classes. I remember anthropology was very interesting for me. So when I decided to go for business, it was more like what I'm going to do uh, to get, um, you know, better career and uh, thinking about uh, financial and everything. But what brought me back to social and cultural um, in the first interest is, um, you know, helping uh, people and it's really rewarding. And from there, um, I, I, uh, I had a better opportunity to actually because I was doing what I liked, what I loved. So that was what I was saying is that, um, you know, so follow your interest, basically. And um, so that influenced me from there. I held a position with medic, special medical coordination at uh, Catholic Charities for Resettlement Office. And that was also a very interesting uh, 
you know, and, and um, so it started from volunteering. That's what I'm saying. And uh, I stick with that. There for me, it's with interpretation and linguistic as well. Um, so, you know, you learn in education and uh, from there you explore. Um, and volunteering, that influenced me a lot. Sharing builds character. Yes. <laughs> it does, it helps the soul. Thank you. Um, Alexis, I'm going to ask the same question. Was there a key moment in time that influenced you in your career path? And if so, please let us know. Yeah, definitely. So I would say I gained a lot of insight into what I wanted to do for a career from internships. And um, my first, in, or I would say my third internship, I was doing it in my final semester while I was at um, Arizona State. And I knew that I wanted to move out of Arizona as someone that was born and raised there and attending some community or attending college for four years. I was just ready to like branch out. Um, and luckily enough, I had an internship with um, a nationwide company, like they had offices throughout the country. Um, and so I basically just went up one day to the director of marketing who was within my um, one of my supervisors for my internship. Um, and put a plug in for myself, you know, like I've been an intern here for a couple of months and I noticed, you know, this work that I've been doing, you, you need someone to do that full time. Like you, you, there needs to be someone in this position. I'd really like that to be me, but I do want to move. Um, and I was scared to death <laughs> as an intern going into that situation. I was like, you know, I'm so scared to put myself out there, but at the end of the day, what's the worst thing that could happen? They could say no, and then I'm going to, and I'll find a different job in a different state. Um, but to my surprise, like they were totally on board with it. They, they hired me on full time. They let me move to Oregon. Um, and that kind of gave me like the boost of confidence. Like, you know, just, just say what you want to say. Um, if you want something, like believe in yourself and have that confidence. Um, and that's definitely followed with me in my career. Um, when I left that company um, to work for something a little more local, I remember that director saying like how inspiring it was for me to walk in and do that as an intern and that she like knew from that moment um, that I was gonna be a good like employee full time. So I'd say like, don't be afraid to put yourself out there um, and try because it's your career and you're in control of it, no matter like who your employer is, that kind of background. Thanks Alexis. Jamie Lee, or if it's Gabriel, who's going to be asking the next set of questions. Jamie Lee, you've got the floor. Yeah, I can go ahead. Um, so the next question is going to be addressed towards Hannah. Um, the question is going to be, what advice would you like to share for students, for current students, interested in the culture and society related professions? I would like to just say have an open mind and don't feel like changing your mind or changing the path that you're on is failure. Um, I knew a lot of people at CVCC in the honors program and when I moved on to ASU in the honors program um, who had these big dreams of all these big things that they wanted to do and any change in that, and it, this is including me, I could talk from my perspective, I, when I got to PVCC, fell in love with philosophy of random, it really was a random, like I didn't even know I was taking the class. I sat down in Dr. Burton's class, took philosophy, fell in love. I looked up what you can do with a philosophy degree, and uh, the number one thing was law school. And I was like, I can do law school, that sounds great. Um, and then I realized through attending a couple law classes, talking to some lawyers, interning with some lawyers, that it is not what I wanted to do. But there was this thing that I had built up in my mind, right, that success looks like I have to go to law school. And so it was a really challenging decision for me to veer from that decision um, and to change course, and it was really scary but I would say keeping an open mind and not painting yourself into a corner too early or really any time during your college experience and just 
allowing yourself to randomly sign up for a philosophy class or allowing yourself to change your mind about what you want to do when you grow up. Thank you so much for sharing. That was wonderful. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ask Cassandra the same question. It's going to be, what advice would you like to share for current students interested in the culture and society related professions? Sure. So um, I, I love what Hannah said, keep an open mind, because I think when, when you're in high school, you have these thoughts and ideas about what you see your parents and all of your, your loved ones around you and your friends going into all these careers, and you really don't have a clue what that means, um, you know, when you become a grown up, per se, if you ever become a grown up. And I, whatever your value system is around you, uh, that, that's how you interpret and perceive what that expectation is of you. And then you get into those classes, you get around those people, and um, maybe it just doesn't seem right. And so you start building these new cultures, these new values, and these new ideas, and you start having a, a more open mind, and you start looking at other opportunities, and, and it may take you down a different pathway, and it is really scary. And you do have to just be open to, you know, what's in front of you and try it, and it is absolutely okay if you don't like it, or you're on the wrong path, you think, and it leads to something else, and, and, and just try it. So being very open to each one of those, I call them chapters, that next step, um, you know, and, and our, from a cultural standpoint, things are changing in the industry and what we might have grown up with and an ideal or value set then is not exactly what's available now because technology is changing. So being able to meld your values and your opinions and your ideas from what was in the past to the future is going to be really important to have that open mind. Sandra, thank you so much. Those were all very wonderful points that you made. I'm going to go ahead and pass it down to Lizzie. It's the same question. Again, it's going to be, what advice would you like to share for current students interested in the culture and society related professions? Thank you. Um, I would have to say be personable. Um, I know owning my own business, um, my passion is helping people. I love to help people make their dreams come true. And I knew through a lot of my clients or overseas outside of the country, outside of the US or their older people, and they struggle with a lot of technology. And they'll ask me, Lizzie, I can't, I can't get into Amazon or I can't do this or I can't do that. Um, can you help me do this sort of thing? <clears throat> Excuse me. So I found that by putting 100% of myself in whatever I do and being personable and helpful and helping these people, whether I get paid or not, um, the important factor is, is that their dreams come through and it all comes around in the end. Um, think of don't think of your future customers and clients as dollar signs because they're not. They're people like you and me. Um, they're out there to survive and, and be happy in this world like the rest of us. So treat them as such. Um, I think that's really, really important. And customer service is everything, especially in this day and age. Um, it, with technology, and like I said, I deal with a lot of older people who struggle with the technology. So, you know, and my... I, yeah, I started out as ghostwriting and now I do publishing and I do every part of it. And um, like was previously said, put yourself out there, don't be afraid. Um, there's areas of my business that I was hesitant for years, but I can, had a continual call in the background. Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this? Can you do that? So I thought, okay, I just, I just jumped into it and figured, well, okay, we'll take it one step at a time. And I figured out and we did it. Um, and it turned out successful. And there's other areas of business that you might find that aren't successful, that you may not like. It's not your favorite thing. You would prefer to do something else. But if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And 
I guess that would be my advice. Find something that you love to do and figure out a way to make a living doing it and you'll be happy. But treat those people honestly. I, I, I do a lot of marketing workshops and that's the first thing that I tell everybody is their customers aren't dollar signs, they're people. Um, and treat them as such and you will be highly successful in whatever you do, whether it's your own business and I'm speaking as an entrepreneur, but whether it's your own business or um, an employer, the same thing. You know, they, an employer, they benefit and, and, and get their good, better return on investment when you're, when you take care of the customers and you're good at customer service. I think that's probably my best advice. Hey, thank you so much. That was amazing. Back thank to you. Francis and Ice and, and Gabe, I'm sorry. Thanks, Katie Lee. Okay, let's start with Alexis. There are many different career paths in the culture and society related profession. How would you advise students on how to choose their path? So this was mentioned before, but definitely explore your interests. Um, when I was in high school, I was really interested in video editing and having fun on camera. And I, you know, I was like, how can I turn this into a career? And I'm like, oh, journalism, like there's anchors on TV. Like maybe that's something I could do that can make money. Um, as I like started to go through the journalism route, I noticed that I definitely like to have like a little bit more creativity with some things. Um, and that ventured me more into marketing, but just from the subtle interest I had in videos led me to journalism, led me to marketing and my journalism like courses and all of that still prepared me very well for the role that I'm in today. Um, I think sometimes we get scared that, you know, if I major in biology, I can only do something in biology, but like it's a very wide range and you're able to do a lot with your degree, um, especially with all the general classes that you get. Um, so I would definitely say follow your interests and don't be afraid to like explore something from a class because that's the best way to find out if you're actually interested in it. Thanks, Alexis. Great job. And Canada, you're in the spotlight again. Many different career paths in the culture and society related profession. How would you advise students on how to choose? So um, also what I said the first time is follow your interest as well and um, do what you what you love and try to explore no matter what class you take in education, it will lead you to your passion. So follow that. Um, like if you're interested, if you want to finish, let's say business and you start with uh, culture, and, um, you know, all of that is going to where it's not like it's separated. It all works together at the end. Um, when, you know, you start working in any company, it is important to learn about cultures and diversity. And, and uh, you know, for me, coming from different uh, backgrounds and learning ESL, starting with that, um, all classes help me, uh, especially with English. Um, and that's what we need to, you know, about what, you know, what I'm doing right now with interpretation and linguistic. Um, you know, it's it's um, it's everything is important. Like with education, it's not like when you change in any path uh, during the educational. Uh, that means that you, it's it's like different different. I see it as all it comes together. So you start business, you study culture, you study. You know, it comes, it comes together at the end when you start working professionally, it, it's, it's, it will be beneficial. So don't feel like, you know, awkward or bad or anything when you change like your educational path. So what I'm saying is that if you're interested in any like anthropology, take anthropology, take linguistic, take, you know, see, explore and see what your interest is. And that helps. Um, and follow your interest and at the end is what you like to do uh, it will be beneficial in in, in every way it would be rewarding um you know financially and emotionally and everything spiritually uh what i'm saying is that doesn't mean that when you change a path in education that means that you're 
you know, something wrong happened. It's all, it all comes together at the end. That's what I'm saying. It's everything is beneficial, right? That you can put it towards your profession life. And I'll hand it back to Jamie Lee. Okay. Um, so the second question, I'm going to go ahead and um, send it down to Cassandra first. It's going to be, is there anything you would like, you would have done differently on your educational journey? If so, please share. I can think of 10 things that I might have done differently, but I'm very grateful that I didn't. Um, like uh, the, the last person was saying, you know, don't be afraid to change. I started out all the way back in high school in environmental science. I went to university um, thinking that I was going to work for the EPA and realized uh, after getting in there for a semester or two that I would have would have been a political science, uh, you know, and that just really wasn't where I was headed. I had a little bit of more Teddy Roosevelt in my mind. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, went to uh, do some medical, um, I, I, I landed up being a surgical tech um, for a job, which was completely opposite of that. It, but I loved it, and that was. And then I ended up at PBCC, um, just because I was going to go into veterinary med, and I and I thought that that was where I was headed. And I had somebody tell me, one of my professors told me, "You're not going to make enough money." So I walked into the counselor's office and I said, "I need to go into business." That's it. so I ended up in economics and. Um, and, and, and I ended up in business and, and I'm each one of those things have led to the culmination of running my own company for 17 years and then taking on this new company and scaling this company. The, the, the beginning of that foundation, even when I was in high school, translates to the culture that we put into our company and the mindfulness about how we take care of our employees how we give back to our community and I'm in healthcare. So I got to blend that medicine back in, which I really love. Um, and then, but what I really ended up being really good at is running a business and doing operations. So I ended up having the culmination of all of those things blended into where I am now. And it's so fascinating, I think, to see later on how you know all those different career path changes that you thought you were having and and all those changes in your career that you kept thinking I'm starting over really ended up being just a beautiful story of who you become and what you're capable of doing so not saying no to any of those things um, it, it really becomes a beautiful story was all amazing thank you so much for sharing now i'm going to go on to hannah it's going to be the same question is there anything you would have done differently on your educational journey if so please share so i really love cassandra's answer because that was my first go-to as well um, i could have gone to school right out of high school i could have gone to college right out of high school and been on a completely different path but i didn't do that um, and so I really cherish all of the little like left turns that I took to get me where I am today. But I will say that I did learn one thing. I was later in my college educational career that I wanted to share um, that if I had just learned it a little bit sooner, it would have probably been a little easier for me. And that was that I very heavily tied self-worth to academia and my performance. Um, which translates sometimes still into my career and what I do on a daily basis, but we're working on that. Um, but I would just say, you know, it's, it's okay to try your best. And if, if that means, you know, sometimes you need to take a break, sometimes you need to take a rest, um, you've got to take care of your mental health just as much as you take care of the rest of your body. And I put so much stress on getting A's, I felt like it wasn't worth it for me for some reason in my head to go back to school unless I really succeeded at it. 
and I felt like people were going to really expect me to do well because I wasn't an 18-year-old kid. Um, and so I really just tied a lot of my self-worth to doing well in academia, and it it hurt a little bit there at the end, and there was definitely some moments of having to um, reassess my values and figure out what what really was important. And then at the end, I got a B plus and I was fine with it. So I think I grew and <laughs> the only B plus I got, but still, I did it and I was okay. The world didn't end. And so it's okay to let your mental health take priority sometimes. Anna, thank you. I absolutely agree. It is important to do self care as well. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and pass it down to Lizzie. Same question. Is there anything you would have done differently on your educational journey? If so, please share. Hi. Um, I have, I, Hannah brought back up a memory I have to share with you. I went into college right after high school. And I went in for equine science. I, I was going to become a veterinarian. And I have to agree also with Cassandra and the fact that all of those twists and turns that you take throughout your life, they create the person you are today. And I've used every bits and pieces of everything I learned to do what I'm doing today. But when I first started out, I didn't get have the greatest of grades in college or high school. And I went into college and I was really worried about whether or not I was even going to be able to pass through college. And I ended up, I was on the dean's list every year and I was proud of that. But I had to take college algebra. And I was always been horrible at math. And so I walked into class the first day, I'm the math teacher, and I don't remember his name, but he walked into class, he had blue, blue jeans on that were kind of ratty, he was barefoot, he had a, a rope tied around for his belt, for his pants, and he had a ratty old t-shirt and a backpack on, and I thought, I am in serious trouble, I am never going to pass this class. So. After a couple of weeks and we had our first test, you know, and nobody did really well. He said, okay, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to be in the learning center and anybody who wants to tutor can come in after school. And I thought, okay, I've got to do this or I'll never pass this class. So I started going in every Tuesday and Thursday. And I did. I passed college algebra with a B plus. I was thrilled. But what it taught me was that I let my fear of something blocked my path and I was afraid. So once I, once I got through his class and I passed the semester and I passed college algebra, it really opened my eyes that sometimes it's unfounded fear that we create in our own minds that is unnecessary. And that I, I kind of adopted the tagline years later that if you want to predict your own future, then create it, thanks to Abraham Lincoln. And I put that thought in my head. So now that is one of my taglines that I use all the time. But I would have to say that's what I would tell. That's, that was a lesson that I learned and I would, I would recommend to anyone else. Don't let fear stand in your way if there's something you want to do. That was amazing. Thank you for sharing. Back to Francis and Gabe. Thanks, Jamie Lee. Oh, next question. Anana, let's go. What do you know now that you wish you had known before you chose your career path? Um, it's, I think, I like the last speech that she said about fear. Uh, I would be more, um, Probably fear. We all we all have that. It's not like, you know. But um, I would not hesitate to do something because um, because I'm afraid to fail or something. Um, I can share my experience because I speak uh, English uh, as my uh, second language. Um, my first language is Arabic. Um, so when I first studying at college, it's a very interesting <laughs> story. Um, I started with ESL classes, so um, 
before, you know, being like English have the second language, you have fears and you're afraid to be, you know, judged to speak out, to, to, to present yourself and stand there and presentation. Um, first, most difficult classes for me was like English 101. So when I went, um, I can build on what Liz, Liz, I think Liz was speaking, the last speaker, uh, about fear, is that I took that class. And um, at that time, the class was like for, um, English native like speakers. So <laughs> they were like, and I was the only one like speaking, um, you know, different English second language. So I sat there and it was like write four pages essay. And I was like, oh, I can put, hardly put a paragraph together. How can I pass this class? And they gave, like, gave us these laptops to finish the, you know, to do. At that time, they didn't have the English 101 for a second, actually, language. That's why. Um, and so, so I was there, and I was like, what am I doing? You know, this is difficult. How am I going to do this? I'm not going to pass this class. So during the test, uh, you know, the test uh, at the, you know, and the laptops were there and everybody started like, you know, so fast with the typing. <laughs> like, okay, this is hard. But, you know, it was like fear. Of course, we face hard situations during, you know, and, um, but actually that, you know, if, if I, if I was like, you know, saying that, okay, I'm going to drop this. This is difficult. I can't do this. But I was, uh, you know, it was scary, but uh, I did it, you know, and um, uh, that's, uh, you know, fear, you know, just face it. That's what I'm saying is that face your fears if you have any fear about anything. And um, and be more, don't be afraid to be judged. It, it, uh, for me, that, that experience, maybe you can apply it on a different situation, but for me, it, linguistic, like, linguistically, it was like, what if, what if I say that? The, the wrong way what if uh you know this is i'm not putting the sentences together um but if i didn't try if i didn't uh, you know um push myself and and face my fears uh, with the language i wouldn't learn i wouldn't become an interpreter and help the community and in, in translation and, and uh, people who needs it um so uh, to give back what i learned that's what i'm saying and to help others, so and become better. So I wouldn't become an interpreter, linguistic, um, you know, uh, with the consultant. So that's what I'm saying. Is that um, for me? I wish I, I actually, yes, I did face it, but I wish I was more even like uh, uh, not shy, maybe, or or uh, interacted more with the, with the, with the experts you know, with I, what I wanted to do, maybe uh, communicate more with the instructors, try to, to do that, um, talk more with advisors academically, um, you know. So, yeah, face your fears, I think. Thank you. You're welcome. Face your fears. <laughs> okay, uh, Alexis, your turn. What do you know now that you wish you had known before you chose your career path? Yeah, similar to Hannah's point about um, putting like your mental health first, I really like beat myself up that and, and had a strong focus that I had to finish college in four years. Um, and you don't have to like, in fact, a lot of people don't. Um, and I ended up taking an extra semester just because I was a full time student and I did work and I had a social life like there's a lot that comes like with life that you can't necessarily like cram all of that with a full-time student job in four years. Um, and so I really focused on that. Um, and I think it it led me away from taking classes I wish I would have taken um, that I was just interested in, but maybe didn't fit like what my major was. Um, I would have loved to explore more of that. And so like, that would be my piece of advice. Like if there's a class that you're looking at and you're like, it sounds really interesting, um, I can't fit it in this term, but like maybe down the line, like do it, fit it in if you can, because like those are the ones that really open your mind um, and allow you to explore more interests. Um, people have said it, like every class you take will give you something beneficial. 
even math, like I also was not good at math, but I learned a lot of like problem solving skills and how to prioritize studying and take advantage of resources. Like all of that came and it's helped me in my professional journey. Um, it wasn't time wasted. So I would say, don't be afraid to take longer um, in your career or like in, in your time at in college because it's not as normal to like complete it in four years as, as sometimes it, you think it would be. There's a lot of people that go beyond that threshold. Very insightful and very encouraging. I'll leave it to Jamie Lee. Thank you. All those were very wonderful responses from all of you. Um, the third question, I'm going to start with Lizzie. It's going to be, what was your biggest challenge in your educational journey? And what did you do to overcome it? Um, I would say my biggest challenge <laughs> was probably math. Um, you know, I was always good at English and, and I didn't have any either history and, and the other basic courses and everything else I took was something I already loved, which either had to do with equine science or drawing or graphic design or whatever. So I didn't really have any challenges in those areas, but I would have to say math was the biggest. Um, and like I said, you know, I just, I kept an open mind and I went to the tutoring and I studied and I found alternative ways for me to, to, to complete the, the course and the, and the classes in math that I understood. And I, and I, I, I would say that probably would be my advice there to anybody is that there's a thousand ways to do something. So it's, a, but it's up to you to find that path that works best for you, because what works for you may not work for your neighbor or your other classmate or someone else. So you have to find your own path and what works for you and, and overcoming that, that hurdle that you're facing. Thank you, Lizzie. Now I'm going to go to Cassandra. Same question. What was your biggest challenge in your educational journey and what did you do to overcome it? My biggest challenge was I really, after my first stint at university, it, it was really difficult for me to figure out what else was, was in the path for me. I really thought it was environmental science and I didn't know how to get unstuck from that. And I really just didn't know where to go from there. So I just was trying things and, um, and then, you know, started a family and then you have a family and you're trying to go to college and work and, and, it, and it's a lot of responsibility and um, you, you just, you find your way. Uh, so I, I just had to try just continuing to work down that path and keep taking that next job that gave me that next experience, taking that next class that really led to something, because obviously, you know, finances drive your mindset, even when you're in college and you might not have a family, you're still thinking about how am I going to live this lifestyle I have in my head? How, how am I going to do all the things that I want to do? Maybe you want to travel and, you know, have a family or, or just any number of things. And you have to surround yourself with mentors who can help you walk through that pathway and give you that advice and help you guide that because they've been there. So surrounding myself with good mentors um, has really been the biggest, the, the, the most important part of my life to be able to get me to the career um, that through the pathway um, and opening up those doors to those opportunities because one person leads to the next person that leads to the next person and you have to be brave enough to ask for what you want and even if you don't know what you want you have to let go of the fear to be able to say it's okay to not know but still to ask that you're open enough for whatever comes in front of you. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Now down to Hannah. The question again is, what was your biggest challenge in your educational journey and what did you do to overcome it? Well, 
probably unhelpful because everybody in this room um, has started the journey, but that was honestly the hardest thing for me um, was actually going back to school and um, pursuing my education. Um, so to be a little more helpful, I guess I will share maybe the next hardest thing, which was when I got to the end of my educational experience. Um, I had studied philosophy and political science. I had realized I did not want to go to law school. I had interned in lots of different political arenas, um, and I didn't like much of it. And I was really scared that I had just pursued two degrees for four years, and I was going to have no job because I didn't like any of it. Um, and it was it was pretty <laughs> like it was <laughs> not a good time. Um, and what I did was I pushed through and I kept trying new experiences. Um, I didn't give up, even though there was a thought. I was so close to getting my degrees, and I thought about maybe switching uh, because maybe I didn't want to do what I thought I wanted to do. And I just opened myself up to more experiences, and it just happened to be the next internship that I took was at the legislature, and I realized that there was all of the things about politics that I didn't like. There was policy, which I always say is very unfortunate that it is represented by politics because policy is really in-depth and it's really fascinating and there's lots of ground to cover and there's lots of like depth to go into it and it really just fills all of those research parts of my heart that I really enjoy um, and I didn't realize that it was there and I wouldn't have realized that it was a whole sector of what you can do with my degrees if I hadn't kept trying. Um, and so I just kept going and I would very much say that that was, it, it's hard because the next, it, maybe I just got lucky in the next internship that I did, um, but it worked out and I really enjoy my career now. Thank you so much. That was very inspiring, Hannah. Now back to Francis and Gabe. Uh, Alexis, how have the experiences of PVCC either directly impacted the work that you do now? Um, I was so excited that I got this question <laughs> because PVCC made me love higher education. Like the experience there that I had as a student. Um, my transfer experience, being able to like smoothly transition to a four-year university, um, and even the experience there, really like the day I graduated college, I was like, how do I end up back in this industry? Because I loved everything about it. Um, and prior to my current role, I did actually work um, for Oregon State University. Um, and at first, you know, I was kind of like, I don't want to be an advisor. I definitely don't want to be a professor because <laughs> I'm not like, you know, I don't want to shout this expertise, but I want to help like students. I, I want to give the same help that I had. Um, and that's what led me to wanting to work in higher education industry. Um, luckily, there's a lot of wheels that are going on behind the curtain that, you know, as a student, you don't really realize how many people work for an institution. Um, and help it bring it alive, bring that community um, behind the scenes. And so I started working in marketing. Um, and then, you know, my family and I wanted to pivot again. We wanted to move across the country. Now we live in Buffalo, New York. Um, and I was, you know, kind of sad. I was like, you know, I love my role in higher ed. Like, how do I stay in that? Um, and luckily I have. Like, I work for a company that exclusively works with higher education institutions. Um, and so now not only do I get to help, like, students in a way, but I get to help all the higher ed professionals in the world um, who have definitely had, you know, <laughs> some tough years to look back on these past couple of times. And you, we all do a lot with a little but higher ed professionals definitely do a lot with a little. And so I'm so grateful for the experience and that now as a professional, I get to help in some way supply that back. Thanks, Alexis. Glad to hear from you. How have your experiences at BBCC either directly or indirectly impacted the work that you do? I think I spoke about that a little bit about um, 
uh, learning uh, English for me. It was very beneficial and um, I cherish that. Uh, it's very special for me because that's what I'm doing right now, being linguistic in interpreter and community interpreter and, tr and translator. Um, and actually with case management that I've done in the past um, in the coordination of services. Uh, so um, I would say those experiences, every class, uh, educational, um, every every class had, uh, had, you know, its own experience. So I cherish these moments and uh, they're very beneficial. It was a positive experience for me. Um, and, um, you know, it was, um, I actually, when I, got, when I finished the associate, uh, I was hoping I can stay for more classes. That was, that was what I was thinking about. That's how I felt that time. And you you know, uh, so it was a positive experience. I love the classes. I love the technology. I love the, uh, uh, closeness that we, we've had in the, the classroom, um, learning from, from, from it was very beneficial because it was, especially with English, because it was more focused and um, you, you can talk to, you know, the instructor of obstacles they can work with you on. Uh, that's what I enjoyed and I loved, I loved it. Um, so it was a positive experience for me and what I'm doing right now professionally. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm happy I attended uh, this Valley Community College. It's a good experience. We're lucky to have him. Jimmy Lee, back to you. Okay. Lizzie, um, the next question is going to be, while you were a student, were there any internships, job shadowing, volunteering, or work experience that helped you gain employment after graduation? If so, please share. Um. Actually, when I first started in Paradise Valley College, we didn't have the cell phones and the technology. Um, so that part of it wasn't available. But yes, there was there was a lot of um, help in the, the learning center and the resource center. Um, I like the fact that at that time, the college was small. So you there was a lot of one on one time with the professors and, and, and the the group. It was just a small atmosphere um, because the college was fairly new at that time. So I would have to say that I like the fact that there was resources. I don't know if there was volunteering or outside or technical. I don't know if there was any of that stuff because I never took advantage of it. But while I was there, it was definitely advantageous the fact that there were, it was a small school and, and a lot of people to help you with whatever you needed help with. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing, Lizzie. Tana, the same question. It's going to be, while you were a student, were there any internships, job shadowing, volunteering, or work experience that helped you gain employment after education? After, I'm sorry, after graduation? If so, please share. Yes, a million times, yes. My biggest advice is do as many internships as you possibly can, even the unpaid ones. Uh, because there are things to be learned and people to connect with. I will highlight two that I did. Um, one was at PDCC, and that was the Student Public Policy Forum, which I cannot recommend enough. It was, I would say, one of the highlights of my entire college career. Um, we spent the entire year studying policy and studying how government works, and, you know, that's just like political science stuff if you're interested in, in it, but there was a lot of other people who weren't political science majors who were there. Um, and the at the end of one semester, we got to come to the Arizona State Legislature and present a bill idea to some legislators here, um, which was an amazing opportunity. And I look back on it and I remember thinking there's no, like, we're college students, they do not care about whatever we're saying, it doesn't matter, but I work here now, and I can tell you they do care, and so it was just, like, such an awesome opportunity, and then uh, at the end of the second semester, we got a 
paid trip to go to Washington, D.C. and do the, state, the same thing with our senators and representatives in D.C. Um, did I mention that it was paid? It is literally the <laughs> highlight of my college experience. It was so amazing. Obviously, I have to also mention um, the Arizona Legislative Internship Program, which um, I didn't know. I thought you had to be at one of the universities to do it, but you don't. It is also a paid internship. It's got a stipend attached to it, and it is it pays for a full semester, the whole semester of your education while you're doing it. Um, it was also an amazing experience, and it is why I am employed <laughs> where I am employed. But um, yes, I think that those opportunities are 10 out of 10. Even the ones that I did that I didn't like helped me figure out what I did like. So I would recommend doing as many as you possibly can. That was all amazing. Thank you so much for sharing, Hannah. Cassandra, again, the question is going to be, while you were a student, were there any internships, job shadowing, volunteering, or work experience that helped you gain employment after graduation? If so, please share. I would say, like Lizzie, um, it was a really long time ago. And so, you know, I don't know that all of those things existed at that time, or I may not have just taken part in them. Um, but I will say that the experiences I had there, the professors that I had really was a springboard and a launching board for me for my career. Um, the experiences there uh, were, my children are in college now and, and I'm frustrated with the experiences that they have. And I go back to what an amazing experience I had at PBCC and how much support I had and you know, even though I didn't take advantage of maybe the internships and all of those things because I had a family at that time, um, the support and the knowledge and, and, and the caliber of the professors that were there, they were extraordinary. It was a great experience and they did spend the time with you and you did have a lot, like Lizzie said, there was a lot of one-on-one -on -one time where they could help you walk through that path and they would take the time and just allow you to share your experiences and help you make some decisions. So it, it, it was an extraordinary opportunity and experience for me. And, and it was a springboard for where I am now. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Cassandra, for sharing with all of us. Oh, camera. Are there any uh, questions in the chat? I don't think so. But if anybody does have any questions, you could drop them in the chat or just shout it out. Or if there's anybody in person that has a question. Any questions? <laughs> So what do you guys think about like when you had trouble? Because really, in my opinion now, you don't get as much when you guys possibly came here one-on-one -on -one time with the professors because they're teaching more classes, more busy and everything. But like when you guys got nervous about a test or final or something, you, know, you get some anxiety, so nervous and everything. What is, like, what do you guys do when you got nervous and everything, like, keep your cool, calm down? What do you guys do? I'd say do something you like to do that usually, like, what are your hobbies? Uh, take your mind off, uh, you know, don't think too much about it, and then come back to work. Okay. Take a deep breath. Thank you. Music. Yeah, I would probably say like don't fear failure so much because you learn a lot from failure. Um, I remember trying to take Spanish once I transferred 
to um, ASU and it was such a large class and we like came up to our midterms and I was like, I'm going to fail. I, I don't want to fail. Like, I don't understand this. What do I do? So I, I did end up dropping that and I went back to PBCC and <laughs> took my Spanish courses at PBCC where I had a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time and I definitely, you know, was hard on myself for dropping a class, but at the end of the day, I, I ended up retaking it, passing, and having a much more personal experiences despite the failure. So it's okay to fail sometimes. Okay, thank you. We all fail. Yes. But it's okay to fail with that in mind. It's okay without what's gonna happen. Just do it. Uh, thank you. Yeah, those are all great answers. Um, there's another question in the chat is, how do you manage your work-life balance? You can take a, a stab at that one too. Um, I, I, my eyes were kind of opened to this, um, that truly like it's balance is maybe not the right word. Um, like I like work-life relationship because like you cannot, you can't get 50-50 to both. Like there's no true balance and some weeks is going to have more work um, and some weeks is going to have more life. Um, but I would definitely say like as a professional, take your paid time off, like take vacations, take a break um, because you will burn yourself out and, and you should be getting this, you know, this time to take for yourself. So take it um, and don't apologize for taking it like you, you deserve a vacation with your family or you deserve to have a longer weekend um, because you're a hard worker. Um, and then, you know, with your life, it, it's making sure that you do stuff that you enjoy and do stuff for yourself. Um, I think a lot of times we tend to put that on the back burners, especially me. I, I have a toddler at home and a lot of my, my time after work, be tending to him and then it's 10 o'clock at night and I'm ready for bed or something. Um, but I try to carve out, you know, even if it's just 20 minutes a day for you to do something that's truly for you or like just enjoyment or entertainment, whether that's watching a show, doing a hobby, um, taking a bath, like little things like that, like will really go a long way to, to help ease that stress. I wanted to just mention something too, and this might be a controversial opinion, so uh, take it with a grain of salt. But I, over the you know 10 years, 12 years that I've been in the workforce, I really have had to learn that there is a time and a place to excel above what you have been asked to do. And there is a time and a place where you have been asked to do one thing and it is okay to complete that task and you don't need to go above it beyond. Um, it's hard to say that as a rule of thumb because I'm, I don't want to advocate for people to not um, do good work or you know go the extra mile, but there are just some instances that you have to figure out for yourself and each, each career is different, each job is different, but there's just some times where you have to ask yourself if going in above, above and beyond is what's good for you and your mental health at the time and if it's even what is being expected of you because i know like i said i how i tied my my self-worth to how i excelled in education i also tended to do the same thing in my career and i would work late and off the clock i would do all of these things that nobody had asked me to do and my employers would always absolutely love it and they would just everyone was in love with this concept of going above and beyond, but I was burning myself out and they hadn't actually asked me to do it. They liked it, but they didn't really ask me to do it. And I learned that there is a level that you can get to where you are maybe putting in an extra mile, an extra step, an extra however much, but you're not going so far as it's, it's hurting you and your mental health. And there's a balance there and it's hard to find and I'm still working on it, but very well said. I could, I could add one thing to that. Go 
I have a if I would have to say the one thing that I haven't heard anybody bring up, and that is your mental health is important, but also your physical health. Um, I know when you get busy at school and you're working 24 seven, it's really easy to run by McDonald's or run into a store and just grab a quick junk snack, but you can't do that. Your body needs good, healthy food. I mean, you can grab a bag of almonds, you can grab some dried fruits, you, you know, get outside in the sun and exercise. Um, if you want to keep mentally fit and focused for school, um, you, you've got to exercise. Every year I was at PV, I loved the fact that they had the gym. And I could, one of my classes was just going to the gym that I could work out. I could do the aerobics, I could play racquetball, whatever I wanted. But that was one class of my day, my four or five days a week, whatever it was, that I loved. And it got me a break. And it really allowed me to refocus on what I needed to do to get done at school and move on with my life. So don't forget the physical fitness and your health. That's a great point. Thank you for sharing. I feel like you guys are kind of personally attacking me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I will keep. I will definitely keep these things in mind. But um, I actually did have kind of a more personal question, um, or more specific. Um, since you guys all are in different career fields, what is your favorite thing about your current position? Helping helping uh, people. It's very rewarding and um, communication. That's also one of the, uh, some classes I took here at the Paradise Valley with communication. And you see how much important communication is and, and um, uh, interacting with people, like clearing, like uh, kind of interpreting the, the meaning of some other people, but big difference that to others with communication. So communicating and, and uh, make uh, others understand each, you know, understand each other. Uh, it helps. Uh, it helps the world. It helps people, communities. Yes. Can you answer that question? Yeah, I'll I'll um, answer. I would say, you know, I. I really love the industry that I'm in of working in higher ed um, in some capacity, um, but that really stems from being able to help others. Um, and that relates to why I majored in journalism in the first place. Like I wanted to be a trusted source of information um, and be able to you know, share that with as many people as I possibly could. Um, and I still get to do that a lot in my role. Um, you know, <coughs> content marketing is something that is being widely adopted by a variety of industries. Um, and it's very important, as was just said, that like communicating with others is very important. So I love that I get to do that um, on a daily basis in an industry that I'm really passionate about. I can jump in real quick and say one thing. Um, my parents did missions work when I was growing up and um, being an employer, um, we have access to immigration attorneys and um, refugees and, and working moms and retired um, business women and men and being able to provide those opportunities um, for them to fulfill a purpose. Um, and serve others and serve community. Um, I'm very grateful and thankful for just the full circle and that all those twists and turns in, in the career and the education and, and all the different avenues and opportunities that you tried and maybe they didn't work out um, still led to an opportunity to be able to serve others and um, provide growth and learning not only for myself but for others and provide opportunities um, in society that are very meaningful and purposeful. I also just wanted to answer this one too, just that 
Um, I really enjoy public service. Um, sometimes we joke at my job that uh, a day around here feels just like it was like plucked right out of Parks and Rec, if you've seen that show, because um, it, it's pretty good, actually, most of the time. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> jokes aside, public service has been really fulfilling for me. And, you know, I thought that it was going to be, I built it up in my head about what it looked like, um, but really just serving my community and serving the state of Arizona in pursuit of a well-balanced <coughs> agenda of policy. It's just something that I really enjoy doing. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with everything that I work on or that I'm passionate about everything that I work on, but just being able to work behind the scenes and help our legislators um, duke it out. On I'm, I was trying to find a better phrase, but there's not one because it gets crazy around here sometimes, but I just do my job and public service is really <laughs> awesome. <the> <laughs> Great. Um, Thank you guys for sharing. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else has a question in person. Um, otherwise, no. I'll pass it off to Cecile. Go ahead. No, we're almost out of time. So, if for, and maybe just you don't all have to answer that. Like one or, or two of you could answer if if you could tell the students here, what is one resource that you can recommend on campus that you can re recommend to the students that would help them be successful or uh, enrich their uh, I remember my time they, they had tutoring. Um, it was very. Tutoring. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we do. Yes, yes. But I saw you open a couple of days. Um, Not every day. Okay. You know, some I think with COVID, you have to have an appointment due to COVID. My answer would be advising. Um, go meet with an advisor. Even if you don't think you have questions that you need answered, um, they will find them and answer them for you there <laughs> in that appointment. Um, I remember going and having an appointment and finding out about um, the MAP program. I'm not sure if that's still there. Um, and I was blown away with how, like, I had all the courses I needed to take right in front of me and it, it opened so many doors. Um, Another one I would say that's not necessarily on campus is your alumni. Um, like we obviously <laughs> love PVCC and would love to support you too. Like I'd love to connect with anyone on LinkedIn after this. Um, just as you know, someone, a resource to spin off ideas on or talk about your courses or your classwork. Um, we're always willing to help. I found that, you know, here or at your foreign, your institution, like if you have that commonality of where you went to school, like, the relationships are there to start. I would just like to say the unconventional um, student services, going over and being involved in clubs and getting involved in activities. Um, something that I noticed when I got to PVCC was a lot of people who um, were just kind of like there to put their head down and truck on through and try and get to a university without anybody noticing them. And <laughs> so easy to get involved. And there's so many people who start rooting for you and start telling you about scholarships that you would never would have known about, um, telling you about all the different resources that you have. I got to work with John like personally and work on a lib guide. Like we worked on a lib guide together. I developed relationships with lots of different, you know, professors and all sorts of different things on campus who really helped me excel in my career and who I still sometimes can reach out to if I need anything um, just because I got involved. And so I would just recommend getting involved in clubs and activities. Then we can advise us direct them to where to go specifically. All right. Thank you so much.
of this good information that you've shared with us, and I particularly appreciated Alexis's plug for reaching out and interacting with our wonderful alumni. And of course, Hannah mentioned scholarships, and scholarships opened up yesterday, and you have until the end of April to apply, and who doesn't need financial support to help uh, cover your tuition and books and transportation? So those are a couple of great infomercials that came out of the question period. <laughs> Thank you to our alumni for joining us today, either virtually or in person, and to all of our students who have attended either in person here in the KSC or uh, virtually. So uh, that concludes our panel. We will be doing other panels throughout the semester and then again in the fall. So please take advantage of this opportunity to get to know a little bit about the careers and professions that you might be interested in through the people who preceded you here at PBCC. So let's give everyone a round of applause. Oh, one last thing, I will be sending out a survey to the panelists as well as the people who attended to give us some feedback because we're always trying to improve the work that we do. So it's a very brief survey, so if you'll just take a minute to complete.